We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normals, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. Hello, my name is Mike, and this, no, my name's Ben, <laughs> and this is Mike. <laughs> We're talking about falafel today, three times. Wow. In front of us, we have three falafel dishes. Each one is different. One of them is really different. <laughs> but we're going to see which one is better. We are going to teach you how to make each and every one and taste and compare them at the end. But James is going to start us off with... Quick falafel. Quick! This super speedy falafel recipe is light, it's fresh, and it's going to be made quicker than it takes Barry to learn how to spell the word falafel. For this, I'm going to be using a tin of chickpeas, a lemon, sumac, cumin seeds, flour, and some fresh herbs. For my salad, I'm gonna be using baby plum tomatoes, cucumber, chili flakes, and some olive oil. And I'm gonna be serving it with a dollop of smoked paprika and tahini yogurt. And what's gonna help bring all of our recipes together? This. Now, first things first, what is falafel? It's essentially deep fried balls of, usually, chickpeas. We're gonna be using a tin of chickpeas, plus all of the other ingredients that I mentioned before, throwing them into a food processor with a knife blade, blitzing them all up. One of the things you'll notice as soon as you take that food processor lid off is the smell. It's so fresh and citrusy. The herbs that you get in there just make the whole thing a lot lighter than the onion and garlic that you get maybe in more traditional falafel. Time to roll some balls. You should be able to get about 10 golf ball sized balls from the mixture. Once they're made, put them into oil, 170 degrees Celsius, for about two to three minutes until golden brown, and then leave to cool on a bit of kitchen roll. Whilst they're frying, I can whip up a quick smoked paprika and tahini yogurt by mixing in smoked paprika and tahini into yogurt. I'm making a quick plum tomato, cucumber and chili flake salad by chopping up some plum tomatoes, cucumber and adding them in with some chili flakes into a bowl. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil just to help smooth it up, but you know. And that's our falafel done. All that's left to do is serve it up and I guarantee you, Barry's still only trying to find out where the second A goes. Um, is it time we move on to uh, some dessert? I'd rather go savoury, but... No, it's time for sweet falafel. Sorry, but you haven't heard of sweet falafel before? Well, neither had we. Until we tried it and we realised it actually works and it's delicious. And this is what I'm going to need to make it. I've got some gram flour, some sugar and spices, some sesame seeds, some pistachios, dates. And of course, this is a falafel, so chickpeas. I'm going to fry all that off and then toss it in some sugar. And I'm going to serve that on a chocolatey, yogurty, tahini, lemony sauce. And to make it chefy, some honey, pomegranates, and sumac on top. And I'm also going to be using the same machine as Jamie earlier. Step one is very simple chuck all your falafel mix into a food processor. I'm then going to blitz this up with the knife blade to get a coarse paste. Then we'll tip that out and start forming some, well, ping pong balls. That's about the size of a ping pong ball, right? Then take those, put them onto a slotted spoon and lower them carefully into your oil. This oil's at 180 degrees. With our chocolate now melted, it's time to make our chocolate yogurt. I'm going to put my whisk attachment on and then chuck in my chocolate, yogurt, tahini paste and lemon zest. Once these are all golden in colour, you want to drain them with a slotted spoon and chuck them onto some sugar. I'm going to toss them around. To plate up, we're putting a few dollops of our yoghurt into our bowl, our falafel on top, and then garnish with some pretty stuff. I've got honey, pomegranate, mint, and some sumac. I'm, in, I'm most intrigued by that one, but 
If you come along this side, we have kind of classique. For this version, I'm making falafel using dried chickpeas. They're gonna taste incredible and I'm gonna serve them on top of baba ganoush. So, we're gonna need dried chickpeas, onion, garlic, whole bunch of fresh herbs, ground coriander, za'atar, which is a really interesting spice blend, ground flour, and then for the baba ganoush, a couple of aubergines, a couple of lemons, some yogurts, some fresh coriander, and to garnish, pomegranate seeds and a little more za'atar. Whereas both of the other dishes were served with a form of yogurt, I'm gonna make a baba ganoush, which is a good chunk of yogurt, but also roasted aubergine. So a couple of aubergines, char them on an open grill or with a blowtorch, and then roast them off in the oven 200 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. Now this is the biggest point of difference between this one and the other two. I'm using dried chickpeas. It'll be interesting to see if there is a taste or texture difference when we compare them at the table. Dried chickpeas, they need soaking in cold water overnight. So, an amount of chickpeas and plenty of water to cover it. Leave it, and by the next morning, they have completely changed, swollen and are ready to go. They're not necessarily cooked, but they are hydrated. Then the method for the actual falafel is very similar to the other guys. Everything goes into the food processor and gets blitzed up with a knife blade. That's a peeled onion and a couple of cloves of garlic, ground coriander and za'atar. And za'atar has kind of sesame seeds and thyme and marjoram and some incredible different spices. Extra sesame seeds, gram flour, that's chickpea flour and keeps the whole dish gluten free, fresh parsley and fresh coriander. Season the mixture well, and then blitz up to a paste that you can begin to bind together. And now much like the other two, we're just gonna shape them into balls. But because these chickpeas were raw, they're actually a very different texture. Plus you've now got the moisture of the onion and the garlic. Again, vegetable oil, 170 degrees Celsius. If it's too hot, you're not gonna cook these all the way through and you wanna get rid of that raw onion and raw garlic flavor. So 170 for a few minutes until golden brown. Once your aubergines are roasted and soft through, well, as soon as they're cool enough, cut them in half, scoop out all that middle flesh and put it into the food processor bowl that you've just wiped out. We're still gonna use the knife blade and we're gonna blitz up with za'atar, yogurt, fresh coriander, and juice the lemons. Season it generously, and that's the base to your falafel. And there we go, on baba ganoush, best looking balls on the table. Right, Jay, let's start with yours. Would you like some quick falafel? Excuse fingers. Cheers. Cheers. The thing is, with all of those herbs and the lemon zest in there, it's so light and fresh. Mm. The texture of that falafel was really good. You've still got a crispy outside. You've got that kind of stodge in the middle you get from a little bit of sort of doughiness mm. and chickpea, but the lemon and the herbs and the sumac, love it. I'm gonna put it out there. Mm -hmm. Can we break the format and go savour again before we go sweet? Also, probably the best direct comparison, it and is. then a curveball. Cheers. Cheers. Fundamentally, still chickpeas rolled into balls mm. and deep fried. Completely different. That is completely different. What's that flavour? I think the big flavour you're getting there is the za'atar. So it's mm. it's kind of the dried herbs mm. of marjoram and thyme. It's still, just as clean, but a very different texture. Mm. Also that baba ganoush. Smoky, oh, but yeah. super tangy. Lots of lemon juice in there. Mm. Lots of fresh herbs, but also a smokiness just from toasting the mm. aubergines on a hot plate. Right, I'm not sure you're ready for this. I wasn't ready for it, but I started making it, and now I am utterly convinced that this is sheer brilliance. Cheers. 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 I don't know. I really what? don't know. The dates and the pistachio mm -hmm. and the sesame, it's kind of almost got that sticky mm -hmm. baklava almost mm. kind of flavour. And I have to be honest, chocolate yoghurt is a really clever thing because yoghurt has that tartness and tang yeah. and then the chocolate makes it rich and even more luxurious but not sweet. It's doughy in the middle. Yeah. Okay. They are kind of donut-like, but then they, when they break apart, they're more baklava. If I had to pick 
one of these three. I'll go for, I'll go for this pudding one, I'll have my sweet one. For me, they're, it's more about the flavours of those two, it's very different, mm. but I don't prefer one over the other. I think there's not a huge amount of textural difference. It holds its form better and it goes crispier and I think they look neater, but the freshness and the sumac and the lemon flavour in that one is as good mm. as the Zatar and the Grand Corrent. It's a personal preference. That mm. knocks it out of the park. I think personally, I prefer the kick of flavour that you get from that, particularly knowing there is little to no prep. That is astonishing and I, it's something I've never heard of before and I've never had before. And if I was served that in a restaurant or at somebody's home, I would be a, Amazed. Well, you know what we think, but we'd love to know what you think. Have you ever had sweet falafel before? Which one of these three would you serve up as your falafel favourite? Comment down below and let us know. Are you still Mike or are you Ben <laughs> No, I'm definitely back to Ben. Uh, that will please everyone. <laughs> Really enjoy it when we mix stuff up. The sweet falafel was bizarre. If you liked it, like it. Like the video, it really does help. And we'll see you every Sunday and every Wednesday at 4 p.m. UK time. Have Until a lovely the next week. Bye-bye. As we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a few days. What's that? Tennis table... Ball size balls.